Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. It is that time again for me to rank the last 10 palettes that I tried. I initially stole this video series idea a few months back from my friend Annette from her channel, Annette's Makeup Corner. I'll of course have her channel down below. You guys seem to really enjoy me doing these palette rankings, so I figured we'd just keep the ball rolling. I think this is my third or fourth one that I'm doing. This one's very ColourPop heavy. I feel like if it wasn't for ColourPop sending me palettes, I would only do this video every like four or five months, I swear. Um, but I'm excited to talk about these. I have some really good favorites in here. I have a couple that I don't love so much, but I don't feel like I completely hate anything. So yeah, this will be fun. Just another way to just recap and shout about the last 10 things that I gotten used. Before we hop into the video itself, I did of course film this look. It's part of my two looks one palette with the Game Beauty Adventure palette. That should already be up on my channel by the time this video goes up. The plugs I'm wearing today are from Here No Evil Jewelry on Etsy. This is a Chrisma brand wig. Check my FAQ in the description box if you need spelling. And I don't know where this beanie's from because it's quite old. Also standing straight up on my head. <laughs> Anyways, with all of that being said, let's not ramble any longer and let's go ahead and just rank my last 10 palettes that I tried. All right, the bottom five. Ranked number 10, I have the new ColourPop Big Poppy palette. Like I said in the beginning, I don't hate any of these palettes. There's just some that aren't my complete favorites. And if you know me at all, you know orange is my least favorite to work with. I don't hate orange. It's just my least favorite. You gotta have a least favorite. And it's just... I'm the least compelled to reach for this one out of the 10. I felt like the shadows performed fine. It's all matte. I feel like it's a very nice kind of staple palette. I feel like a lot of people would really enjoy this one, but just out of all 10 that I have to talk about, this is the one I'd be the least compelled to reach for just because it's the least exciting color to me. Um, again, no major issues. I think it's fine, just not my favorite. Ranked number nine, this is the Grandeur palette from ColourPop. They came out with the, I think it's called the Dark Blooms collection where it had three palettes. This is the only one that they sent me, which is fine. I did not need all three, um, but this is the one they sent. This is the Grandeur palette. This has such a reflective gold <laughs> background, so I'm sorry if I blind you. The palette's not my most favorite. I feel like these just aren't the tones that I reach for the most. I do feel like these tones are more what I would reach for over the last one I talked about. I also don't love that there's a pressed glitter in here, but I'm starting to just learn to accept pressed glitters because it is what it is. Overall, it's just not the most exciting palette. It's not bad. I did end up decluttering this one in my recent makeup collection and declutter. I didn't have this palette at that point, but I probably will give this one to a friend at some point as well. I did end up putting this in the declutter pile just because I think one of my friends will get more use out of it than me. But overall, it's not a bad palette. It's just, it doesn't spark enough joy. <laughs> Ranked number eight, this is the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette. I actually really enjoy this palette. I really like cool tones, especially when it comes to neutrals. That's just more my game. I like the way they have this palette laid out where we have kind of the blushy colors, the neutrals, the kind of gray neutrals, the bluish gray neutrals, the like taupey shades, and then more of like a rosier pink row. I think the colors in here are really pretty. We don't have any glitters. We do have a mix of sequin shadows, mattes, shimmers. I think the colors themselves are really pretty. And again, I do like cool tone neutrals. The only reason this one is so low is because it's so large. I'm not a big, big palette person. It's just not my favorite. I like smaller, more curated color stories. And I did also get the That's Chope palette before this one. So I love that one with my whole heart. So I don't feel like I need this one. I ended up putting this in my declutter pile as well. And while I do think it's a great palette, it's only mostly this low because it's so big. I feel like if it was even half of this size, it probably would have been bumped up a lot higher, but that's all I have to say. I have to judge it on the size in this sense. <laughs> Ranked number seven, another ColourPop palette. This is the ColourPop Hello Kitty Snow Much Fun palette. By the way, I've done YouTube videos with all of the palettes I'm gonna talk about, sometimes a couple YouTube videos, sometimes also an Instagram video, so just go searching if you need inspiration. I've had a good time with this one. I think it's cute. Again, there's no glitters. I kind of vibe with the square pans. I think it's a cute little change for ColourPop. I don't know. I thought it was a cute little color story. I heard a lot of people say that it wasn't like Hello Kitty colored enough, but I feel like it doesn't need to be those old school primary Hello Kitty colors that it used to be. I feel like this is very representative of like the pinky Hello Kitty, snowy vibes. I don't know. I like the color story. I think it's cute. I don't feel like it's the most versatile palette. I feel like a lot of your looks are going to end up looking very similar, but I just still think it's cute. I didn't really have any major issues with it. It's just not like so beloved that I put it much higher than this, but I did end up keeping this one from my declutter for now. So this one will <laughs> stay in my possession for a bit. 
And rounding out the bottom five, ranked number six, this is the new Wine and Only palette. I just, just got this one. I just played with this one for the first time yesterday. I don't love that it's a plastic color pop. Can we please go back to the cardboard? <laughs> Why are we taking a step back? But it looks like this. It's a monochromatic nine pan kind of burgundy wine colored color scheme. I feel like they could have gone more directions with the wine theme, but I get that this is a monochromatic palette, so that's why we're kind of in the rosé burgundy kind of situation. Overall, I actually had a really good time with this palette. I think it's really pretty. Again, we don't have any glitters, so that makes me happy. There are a couple sequin shadows. I wish they would have just been matte, but at the end of the day, I still had fun with it. I like the look I created. I'm excited to film an Instagram video with this at some point. I really like burgundy tones on me. They make me happy. I feel like this is very rich and grungy, and Overall, I really enjoyed this palette. It just wasn't like as exciting as my top five, but I did think this was exciting enough to be pushed to number six. So there's the wine and only palette. Moving on to the top five now in fifth place, this is the ColourPop Star Wars collaboration, the Child Palette. I think they did a really, really good job with this collaboration and just this palette in general. The color story is just so curated. It has those grungy tones. Again, there's no glitters, which makes me happy. I love the shimmer choices. I love the mattes. I feel like it's pretty versatile for what it is. I think this is a really fun, cute color story. They really nailed it with this one. I feel like they have potential to make really cool curated color stories. They just end up doing a lot of very muted things or monochromatic things. I would love to see more things like this where it's so just, I don't know, it fits the theme so perfectly and they really did a good job. So I was very happy with this little guy. This one is a good little palette. Moving on to number four. This is the Musée Beauty Van Gogh palette. I love this little palette. Such a cute curated nine pan color story. I loved their first palette, the Impressionism palette, but this one even blows that one out of the water. I just, I love how small it is. It's grungy, it's colorful. I love the matte to shimmer ratio with the five mattes for shimmers. The shimmers are so wet looking. The mattes are very pigmented, but very blendable. I love the tones in here. This palette just makes me very happy and I've had a really, really good time playing with it. You guys have seemed really excited about this palette as well, just judging by what you've told me. I'm really into this palette and I knew it was gonna be in my top five. So that was a no brainer. I'm very excited about this cute little color story and I can't wait to see what other palettes this brand comes out with because they've been doing such a good job. I love their palettes, their lip pencils, their glosses are really nice. I'm wearing their cream blush right now. They're coming out with really pretty, I feel like really well thought out products and I just can't wait to see where else this brand goes. Moving on to the top three. I always get really excited when we get to like the top three because these are now my favorite favorites out of my last 10, which is really cool. Um, ranked number three, I decided to put in my Game Beauty Adventure palette. It's what I'm wearing today, like I mentioned before. I'm having a great time with this palette. For one, the theming is awesome. This is a brand new brand. They just came out. This is their first product. Their packaging is so pretty. I love the gaming inspired concepts. This is what the inside looks like. I just think it's so fun. There is a pressed glitter in here, which I know I've mentioned isn't my favorite thing, but I'm also just trying to like accept the fact that there's glitters and palettes now we have lots of textures and palettes which in a way is exciting that we have multiple textures but I would like to see them come out with a palette without the glitter which will be really exciting I think this is just a really fun palette I'm having a good time with it I'm still working on playing with it even more because I'm just really excited and I don't want to put this one down I don't know I don't really have much else to say the stealth shade in here is like my favorite shade it's on the outer portion of my wing here I'm having a good time with this palette. I can't wait to see what else this brand comes out with. They are very intriguing and I just, I'm excited to see more from them. Ranked number two, this is my Sugar Pill Capsule 3 Black Edition palette. It looks like this. It is just such a grungy dream. I love the capsule palettes. I loved the first two and I love this one the most out of those three. I think it's so beautiful. I like the blush shade in here. I like the mattes that they chose. I love the shimmers they chose. I especially love, of course, this like weird yellow and grungy green. I feel like we didn't need both of these purples. I've mentioned that a few times. So if one of those was a shimmer green, it might have even gotten pushed to number one. But Overall, I really like this. I've played with this so many times. I think it's so pretty. I love the capsule palettes and I'm just so excited to see more. I do have the anniversary capsule on its way to me. It hasn't officially shipped yet, but I do have the tracking for it. I'll get that one at some point and then I'll play with that collection for you. But for now, that one stays my favorite capsule palette and I'm just excited to see more from Sugarfill. All right, finishing it off, number one. Did anybody guess it? I feel like you probably would have guessed it. This is the Raw Beauty Christie collaboration with ColourPop, the At Forest Sight palette. Christie did just such a beautiful job with this. It's the perfect combination of grungy tones, but also color. They're kind of deeper, more jewel toned. I love that in like a colorful palette. I love that it's not just a typical rainbow palette. 
I love just the shades themselves that she chose. I adore the two shimmer shades in here. Overall, she just absolutely killed it. This makes a really cute blush as well, by the way. The second restock of this already happened. I don't know off the top of my head if there's going to be another restock. I feel like it would be in ColourPop's best interest to like keep this around for a while because people are really into this palette. I love this one. I had such a good time with it. I really don't have any complaints. There is a sequin in here, but I just pretend it's a matte, so it's not the end of the world. But overall, I love this palette. I think the artwork is beautiful. The theming is so cute. I love that she just really themed this on her homeland in the Pacific Northwest, Washington area. I just... I think she did a great job and I'm very excited about that one. And I feel like it just deserved the number one spot, you know? So yeah, those are the last 10 palettes that I tried ranked for you. I feel like I went through this fairly quick, but I also feel like I've talked about these in depth quite a lot already, but now we have them ranked out. I really like doing these videos and you guys seem to enjoy them. Let me know if you want me to continue this series. As always, I can quit if you guys decide you hate it. But until then, I'll just continue to keep track of my palettes and rank them once I've tried 10. <laughs> I would love to know your thoughts. Did my ranking surprise you at all? Would you agree with what I said? Have you tried any of these? Are you interested in any of these? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. I've enjoyed filming this video for you guys. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me your last 10 most recently used emojis because it fits the last 10 palettes theme. And if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please hop over to my Instagram. It's Butte Bean. Follow me there. I post every single day. And don't forget to subscribe. I've had fun posting every single day so far in the month of December. However, I am about to go back to just most days as well. I've made it through Christmas. I feel like that's a good accomplishment. But feel free to subscribe. I'm here most days. Please make sure you're staying informed with everything that's going on in the world. There will be links in my description box that will take you to information and resources and ways in which you can help. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.